Hello, today we're going to look at a Insta360 ONE X workflow with Macs or PCs. So before we get started, I'll quickly walk you through the workflow that I'll follow. With the ONE X, uh, the workflow is quite simple. You basically just have to take the photos from your camera, put them onto your laptop, put them into the Insta360 Studio, um, export them, and you're basically done. You can then edit them in Photoshop or Lightroom, but you know it's not mandatory. I'll go through all the different things you can do with the desktop app and what's easier and more difficult uh, versus an iPhone or an iPad, which you can probably find a tutorial about at the end of this video somewhere here. I don't know. Bear in mind that the Insta360 Studio is updated fairly frequently, so by the time you're watching this, some things may be different. This should still be hopefully useful to you. So let's get started. All right, so here I have my DNG files from the One X. We'll look at two sample files. So one is this from my window and you can see kind of like the Z1, the images that come out of the One X are also in fisheye. Technically I have to stitch it, but it's, it's a lot easier with the One X. And we'll also quickly look at batch exporting. So that's why I have two images. So just open up your Insta360 Studio. Uh, make sure that you have updated it. They update this thing a lot, I tell you. And what we're gonna do is just pop both our images. We're gonna pop, pop both our images right in. Pop, pop! Here you go. So when you're in Insta360 Studio, this is kind of what you see. Uh, you can change your perspectives from up here. So you have your tiny planet, crystal ball, default, natural view, and flat. Um, and these are the same settings that you get when you're looking at it on your iPad or your iPhone. Here, when you have the flat option in the studio, that's actually how your equirectangular image is going to look like. So again, if you're doing all your images for batch exporting and you're doing a tour and all that, um, it might be a nice idea to check out what the image is going to look like when you export it in case you want to do the stitch calibration particularly or you want to correct the horizon, then you can kind of have a better idea of it early on. So if, again, if you're batch exporting, just go into this mode and look at all your images with that. You can export your images as equirectangular images in a rather easy way, so we'll look at that. And you can also take snapshots of your images if you want to post them on social media or kind of make it look cool. But in terms of creating virtual tours and batch editing, um, all you have to do is have your images in here uh, do any of your um, stitching calibration if you want to do it. Usually it's a good idea to do it, I would say, um, but sometimes it does glitch out. Um, and put your nadir if you want. Personally, I prefer to put my nadir when I'm putting it into the virtual tour software. So when I've actually uploaded it online, I prefer to do it there because you get a lot more um, flexibility, especially after you've made your tour. So I would actually recommend you to do it there. But if you want to do it there, you can just click use nadir logo here um, upload your logo, set its size and everything. So it, it's fairly straightforward. All right, so when you have all your files in here, all you have to do is select them, go to file and say batch export. And that's how you export multiple images. And here you get to pick the resolution that it's exported in. I always keep it in original, but if you're gonna put it somewhere specific and you wanna export in a certain size, you can also do that. And again, this is where you decide if you want the nadir or not. I won't put it in this case and the horizontal correction, it usually does fairly well, but if you know your way around Photoshop, you can also avoid that and take care of it later. And once you hit OK, it will export both of the images. So once it's done exporting it, you'll see it here. It has quite a nice export window where you can see the size of your files, what their status is, and even open them directly in the folders you saved it to. If you're doing multiple batches of folders, this task manager really helps. Um, and once your images are exported, they will look something like this. So the Insta360 Studio will take your fisheye looking images in DNG, process them into an echo rectangular image and give it to you in DNG as well. This is quite nice of <laughs> Insta360 because this means that you can still put this into Lightroom or Photoshop and export it from there, still play with your colors and do any other thing without really losing much quality on the different views that you get in Insta360 Studio. So, and you have your crystal ball, and I think this actually looks fairly cool, especially if you're gonna post it somewhere. However, if you were to go 
and click export now, it would still give you the correct angular image. So if you want to actually export something that's, you know, in your perspective in the software, you don't just export it after putting it to perspective, it'll still give you a correct angular image. But what you do is click here where it says snapshot and it'll ask you where you want to save it. So we'll call this snapshot, very creative, I know. So once you take the snapshot and save it wherever you want, it will look like this. It's not a PNG, unfortunately. I don't know why they didn't just make it a PNG when this function is the same as one. But if you want to just put that into Photoshop and quickly remove this black, that should work fine and give you a quite cool looking PNG. I should add that if you want to post whatever you're shooting directly into social media or send it to someone and it's not necessarily making virtual tours, this entire process is going to be a lot easier if you do it on your mobile device. So for the video on that, click somewhere here under the video, over the video, I don't know, but figure that out because I think that makes a lot more sense to edit these kinds of images in. And if you're doing virtual tours, then I think that the desktop is a bit easier. All right, this was a quick one, but there are a few things that I want to mention before wrapping it up. I didn't actually show you what you would do in Photoshop or Lightroom because it's similar to any other workflow. It's not really specific to the One X. However, if you're in between Photoshop and Lightroom and deciding which one to use, I would recommend going with Photoshop if you're going to remove the tripod under your camera and you're going to manipulate the image here and there, Photoshop is the way to go. It's also a much faster workflow if you're working with a single image or just a few images, it's gonna be a lot faster to import them into Photoshop and get it done. However, if you're working with many images, so you know if you shot a big tour and you need to do some color grading, then Lightroom is going to make it a lot easier for you to process multiple images and it has a lot of functionality that helps you speed that up. Also, Lightroom is going to be a better choice if you're for some reason cataloging your content. So if you have multiple catalogs for each tour and you keep that in Lightroom, then it's going to be a lot nicer to have them all archived and neat at the end of the day, whereas Photoshop doesn't really use catalogs. And lastly, you could also prefer Lightroom because it's just a lot more usable in terms of color grading. I find that whereas Photoshop has more or less all the same functionality because Lightroom was made out of Photoshop, more or less, um, Photoshop still doesn't have this step-by-step, -step, everything you need in one panel color grading unless you create your own custom panels. So to wrap it up, use Photoshop if you have few images and you need to stitch out your tripod. Uh, use Lightroom if you have many images and you need to color grade and do it fast and efficiently. As I mentioned, I'll have another video linked somewhere at the end of the video, under the video, somewhere in the video where you can see a workflow for the One X with the iPads and iPhones. And the main difference is that those have a slightly nicer user experience. They're a bit funner to use and they're just easier to share right off the bat. So, you know, if you're going to use it for social media, uh, you're on vacation, you're using video, you're doing Matterport, you want to upload a photo to Street View, it has many, many, many more things it can do than the studio on the computer. However, the studio does one thing very well and that's batch exporting stuff and kind of giving you better space to do professional work. So it really depends on what you need it for and if you're interested, just go to the video and yeah, maybe, maybe that's better for you. Thank you all for watching. If you liked it, please like it. If you liked it a lot, maybe subscribe would be cool. I wouldn't mind. Either way, I may, may not perhaps see you in the next video.